Welcome to Laptop Radio. Today's topic is growth in clean energy with big tech investing heavily for their data center. We have Samuel Gibson with us. He is the founder and CEO of Hedron Energy. Hello, Samuel. How are you? Hey, everybody. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on here. I'm excited to chat further. Where are you based? So Hadron is based in downtown San Francisco, and we got our start in San Jose and then moved here and since have been steadily scaling up our engineering team, which has been great. Awesome. I'm in the Bay Area right now, and the weather has been gorgeous. Yes, it's very hot today, so I enjoy that. It's nice. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So let's begin. Tell us your story. What's your background? Yeah. So I'm a first generation mechanical engineering recent grad. And I also got a degree in engineering management. During my studies, I was at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and I focused on material science and nuclear engineering. This was mostly because I was really interested in physics and chemistry. And Ever since I got into school, I knew I was going to be moving out to the Bay Area, given all the amazing engineers out here. So what I did during my time at university, I actually started the American Society of Mechanical Engineers ASME student chapter at Nebraska, mm -hmm. and that grew to over 200 members. We got a few global engineering awards for this which was really fun. And then, yeah, throughout my time, I found the importance of internships and scholarships to be very critical to the success of what I've been able to do so far. And now where I am, I graduated May, 2023. And since then I started one successful business and this was a HVAC and plumbing service-based company, which grew to $4 million in revenue. Awesome. And 18 employees. And now with Hadron Energy, we are nearly 10 employees, mm -hmm. our team members, and essentially we're working on micro modular reactors for a completely novel design for revolutionary clean energy with data centers, as you mentioned. Yeah. Awesome. What got you interested in clean energy? Yeah. So growing up, I feel our generation really got marketed very hard that we have to do something about the environment. Mm -hmm. And this holds very true to myself. I care a lot about it. I want future generations to have a clean place to live. And what we're doing is very exciting because I clearly can see the results of everything that we do. And clean energy on the small scale ultimately will create a very large impact. So this is what gets me excited about it, for sure. Awesome. And I wanted to ask you about nuclear energy. Do you think that's a moonshot or do you think that's possible to build? Yes, it's very much possible to build. The reason being, we already have multiple decades of operating experience. I actually had the opportunity to stand on EBR1, which is the first nuclear reactor ever created in the world that produced electricity. That was in Idaho. And that was in 1951. And since then, we now have 94 reactors in the United States that provide a mass amount of clean energy to the end user. So mm -hmm. it's proven. Also, it's exciting. What we're working on is proven, but what we're doing is completely new. So that's what makes it pretty fun. What kind of products does your company make right now? And how are you generating revenue? Yeah, so at the current time, to give you an idea, we are in the R&D stage. We mm -hmm. are filing patents. We are building our micro reactor design. And this takes a little bit of time. In the beginning, it'll mostly be a lot of partnerships is how we'll generate revenue. We haven't truly been focused on this just yet as far as generating revenue goes because the majority of our revenue will come from the deployment of our micro reactors, which is a little bit out in terms of the development phase, but in terms of investments and these things, we're very much heading in the right direction. So that's very exciting. Awesome. How do you see the nuclear energy industry grow? Do you see collaboration among the different companies or do you see it as a competition? So I've now had the chance to travel a little bit 
I've been to London, I've been to New York, Idaho, and I'm going to Florida next month. And it's very consistent across the board. Everybody's very collaborative. Mm -hmm. People want to help each other because we're all, as an industry, moving towards the same goal. So that's very refreshing to see. Of course, there's always going to be competition, but at the end of the day, everybody's in it together. It's all our planet, so we need to work together for sure. What can people do to actually help you and also help the planet? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say the best way people could help us specifically would be to follow along our journey. We post a lot on LinkedIn. We also have a newsletter. So anybody interested can follow this. That's where we post a lot of very exciting updates. We share trending news in the nuclear engineering and energy industry. So if people want to follow, that's how they can stay in touch. And then if any individuals want to get more hands-on, they can always reach out to us. And we're happy to have conversations with early supporters. Mm -hmm. And the other way that people can help the planet in general would be just to be mindful of the things that they do by using products that are sustainable or just being mindful of your daily actions. That's the best piece of advice for now. But as we continue to scale nuclear energy, these sorts of things will greatly help our situation, which will be amazing. What are some of the R&D areas that you're focusing on? And in five to 10 years, what are you looking to see? What is your vision for nuclear energy and clean energy? Great questions. I'll answer your first question, which is what are we specifically designing? So we're working on the reactor core right now, okay. the housing and how it fits into the entire ecosystem. So what this means is a micro reactor, it doesn't have to be on the grid, it can be off grid. Mm -hmm. So this means... Essentially, you can drop it down in the middle of essentially nowhere and have emissions-free energy. So there's a lot of design considerations. Of course, mm -hmm. the main priority is safety. In five years, to give you an idea, we expect that we'll be definitely in production. We'll have our test unit and we'll be testing reactor. We'll be displaying that it works very safely. Mm -hmm. And at this stage, this is when we can really accelerate operations and start manufacturing because micro reactors are manufactured and then deployed. Awesome. And what is your vision in five to 10 years? So five to 10 years, starting off with five, this would really be when our first products are hitting the market. And what we're really pushing for is to be very efficient, cost-effective. That's what the end user wants for these products. That's our main priority. And if we can deliver that within five years, we'll be very successful. And then within 10 years, it'd really be about expanding to areas that really need what we're developing. And this will be in partnership with the regulatory bodies, of mm -hmm. course, as far as what other areas we can deploy technology, mm -hmm. what sort of remote communities we can help serve yeah. these things. So that's what I see. I see that you have a lot of experience in entrepreneurship. You grew an industrial company at 22 that achieved 4 million in revenue and you had 18 employees in eight months. That's a really short amount of time. Now you're growing a company that requires R&D and might take a little bit longer because of collaborations with the government bodies and other industry leaders. Mm-hmm. What are some of the challenges that you face building this company as opposed to the first company that you created or built? Yeah, that's a very great question. I'll highlight some of the main challenges in the first one. Yeah. Uh, and that was definitely just figuring out how to start something from zero. Yeah. That's probably the most challenging thing is that's not taught in school. That's mm -hmm. something you have to really self-teach yeah. uh, or have a great mentor just having the the confidence and the ability and the drive to just make it happen. Mm -hmm. That was really what I learned in the first company. And it gave me an amazing perspective for the second startup because I was able to learn from many mistakes. And that's probably the biggest thing with entrepreneurship is learning from your mistakes and learning from others and just 
continuing to better yourself. So really for the second one, yes, it will take a little bit longer to get us to the market. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, the reason I started this company was to create that serious impact of units actually removing carbon emissions and greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, having clean electricity around the world. And I think that's what's really inspired me to start this. Awesome. So sometimes starting a company is about team and starting an energy company requires very specific skill sets as opposed to doing a general web company. How do you find talents and what kind of skill set do you look for in people? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say we mostly look for people that are very humble, really driven. Often it's individuals that want to have a great impact. The engineering team, as far as that's concerned, it is a lot of engineers and scientists, as you would expect. Say the business side, it's people that love the idea. They're in love with the vision. Mm -hmm. And you can tell people are passionate about it. Mm -hmm. So really, when, say, we're interviewing candidates, we just look to see if that passion is coming through mm -hmm. the interview and what sort of extracurriculars or things outside of work that people do. And if we're able to just compile that into a perfect profile, that's exactly what we're looking for is people that are hungry to learn, very eager to make a difference. Awesome. And what is your momentum like at the company right now? I know because when we're creating the clean energy workshop at Stanford or, or a conference at Stanford, I realized that a lot of people in the space is super passionate and excited. Everyone loves the topic. So how is it going at the company right now? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. We have amazing morale. Our team mm -hmm. is very excited. We have many candidates that are very interested. So we're attracting outstanding people that really want to make a difference. And something else that's just very exciting. I know this isn't the most important metric to measure, but I try to be a community builder. And yeah. with our Hadron Energy LinkedIn page, we've gained nearly, at this point now, a thousand followers in just three months. Okay, awesome. It'll be fun. So... I like to just share the people are out there. The passion is there. It's a large community. So that's what's exciting. Back in the days when we're hosting that conference, most people didn't really understand what nuclear energy means. Again, people think it was a moonshot. And it seems like people are actually investing in the space. It's something that's tangible that can be built. And there's products that will be made. Do you understand why and where it came from? Yes, the origins of nuclear energy go back to other sort of motives, if you will. In the past, there was some more times that really sparked the idea to create these sorts of things. However, we have since harnessed this for the better, and we've harnessed it for the best of all humanity. And we have these devices now that are capable of producing emissions-free clean energy at a massive scale. Yeah. This is where the, the motivation to create the technology back in the 1950s or the earlier days when everything was starting out. But once we realized we could use it for peaceful purposes, this is when innovation really started to take off. And the thing is, public perception is really starting to change. Now the majority of people in America support nuclear energy as a clean source. And this shift was absolutely amazing for investments flowing in. And now you've probably seen Amazon investing $500 million, Google yeah. committing 500 megawatts, et cetera. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Even around the world, I've seen a lot of green initiatives sponsored and created and built by government with other companies, which is really awesome to see, especially around the world. And a parent as well. That's awesome because it's a global challenge. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone doing certain things basically help with that. Do you live a certain lifestyle that basically oh, yeah. aligns with the company? <laughs> well, I totally live a certain <laughs> lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's, <laughs> that's a great question. My lifestyle is completely focused really on the company yeah. starting this thing out because as you can imagine, 
in the beginning for something like this. It's very hands-on. Mm -hmm. For example, this morning I was filing a, a patent and trying to get this through, talking with investors. And it requires a lot of attention, but I know, as with my last company, last venture, there comes a point when it feels as if the company runs itself, as yeah. it's a, a well-oiled machine. As long as you design it in the proper way, that's how you make a valuable company. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And it sounds like you're on track. Is there anything that you want to share that I have not asked you? Yeah, I just wanted to share actually just how something like this works, just in case anybody is wondering. There's two types of processes. There's fission and then fusion. I think you mentioned fusion you're pretty familiar with. Yeah. Fusion as well? Yeah. Okay. So fission, you have these enriched uranium fuel rods that you're introducing neutrons to then split the uranium atoms that then create a chain reaction of more atoms splitting. And this releases thermal energy, which can be harnessed to generate steam from a water supply to then power, spin a turbine, which then spins and produces power from a generator. So with this, it's a pretty outstanding and phenomenal process. However, when you see one of these units working, it's actually boring, which is what I would like to share is the science behind it is fascinating, but it's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely what I'd like to share. Awesome. I've uh, interviewed a few people on green energy and, and fusion and nuclear energy as well. Mm. The science behind that is awesome. Yes. My last question is, what is one piece of advice that you have for the community? Yeah. So if it's an aspiring entrepreneur or if it's a student or somebody kind of getting started, the best piece of advice I would have is just is to never stop learning. I try to read as much as I possibly can. Right now, I know I'm reading six books simultaneously and it's bad. I need to just finish <laughs> them one at a time, but the thing that gets you very far is just remaining very curious and wanting to learn more. And I think as long as you're trying to do very good things, great things will happen. So I guess that's really what I would want to share. Awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. that. How do people find you and where can people follow the journey of the company? Yeah, so there's two ways right now. On LinkedIn, I'm very active. I post every day. So I definitely would like to connect there on LinkedIn. Samuel Gibson is where you'll find me. And then we also have a company page on LinkedIn, Hadron mm -hmm. Energy with the green H for now, or the green background, the black H. We're in the process of rebranding, but as far as the website, we have a newsletter. Definitely recommend signing up for this. It's where you'll see a lot of exciting updates. And we have a new website launching soon. So this will be quite exciting. Awesome. I'll follow as well. Thank you, Sam. Yes, thank you. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.